I was camping in the middle of nowhere in Washington near Mount Rainier, like not an official campground just way out in the forest where I wouldn't have expected another human for miles. One night I wake up and hear something, open my tent, and there is a guy sitting by where my fire had been. Nothing particularly noteworthy about the guy, just a fairly regular looking dude sitting there a couple of feet from my tent. No bag or pack or anything with him, just a guy. He saw me open the tent, his eyes got huge like he had just seen a ghost, and he took off. It shook me up pretty badly, but over the next day, I managed to put it out of my mind fairly well after writing it off as just some odd occurrence, and a guy who was probably high or something, and had somehow managed to set up camp, coincidentally not far from mine. Then two days after that, and 10-15 miles away in totally random directions that nobody could take the same path as on accident, I was sitting by the fire that night and started hearing noises that I got more and more convinced were a person. I called out to them, and out of the darkness, someone was like, do you know how to get to Bell's Canyon? I said no, I don't even think that's a real place there. They kept talking from just out of my line of vision. I tried to see them with my flashlight, but they yelled, aim that away, and kind of spooked and not wanting to piss off a potentially crazy person, I did it. After like 15 minutes of me being very freaked out and them talking and asking completely random questions from the darkness, it sounded like the voice had gotten closer so I shined my light that way again, and it was the same dude who had been outside my tent two nights before. He had to have followed me almost 15 miles over two days because there is no way he could have just accidentally wound up in the same spot as vast as that wilderness is. No possible way. As soon as my light hit him, he took off again. I started to chase him but didn't want to get lost in the wilderness in the dark, so stopped quickly after probably only 100 to 200 feet. This one couldn't be written off because the only way he could have been in both places is specifically if he was following me. I decided the trip was very over first thing in the morning, and hiked back out over three days, constantly doubling back, trying to throw anyone following off my trail, and occasionally hiding and waiting to see if he would come by following me. I really can't describe how terrifying it was to feel like I was being hunted through the woods, and to actually have to brainstorm on things I could do to best avoid potentially being murdered. On the first night of hiking out, Twice I heard what sounded like a person walking circles outside my tent, but by the time I mustered the courage to look, nobody was there. On the second night I heard what I thought was an animal at first, but it slowly sounded more like a person imitating animal calls. It could have still been an animal, but it really sounded like human howling. I nearly cried when I finally got back to my car. The relief was so strong, to this day probably the most terrifying experience I've ever had. I have no idea who the guy was or what his intentions were and no way of getting an explanation, but I really can't articulate just what a terrifying few days it was. I am a 26 year old male and I had been planning a camping trip with my wife and dad for a whole year. I wanted everything to be perfect as we don't get away from town and dive deep into the woods as much as I'd like. This takes place in the densely forested Davy Crockett National Forest in East Texas. Earlier that day, my dad decided to go a little early and pick out a good spot for us to camp. To give a layout of where we camped, there were two dirt roads on either side of us, and an overlook to the north of us. We camped in the middle between the two roads. My wife and I arrived and met my dad down there around 11 a.m. We set up camp and proceeded to enjoy the day until around dinner time, when we started to cook our meal for the evening. Right as we finished dinner, we saw this truck circling around our campsite. He went around us several times and finally pulled right up into our camp and got out of his truck. He then proceeded to tell us that this was his family's campsite and how the firewood that was lying around was his. Now in this particular forest, campsites are first come, first serve, and my dad had been there since 9 a.m. He then asked if he could camp next to us, and of course, being friendly, we said yes. We didn't know that when he said next to us, he meant directly on top of us. 
He backed his camper in so close to our tents and vehicles that he blocked my truck in. We weren't sure why he was doing this, being that there were so many other campsites available, but we just shrugged it off and tried to have a good time anyway. Not too long after that, we noticed a white Dodge dually circling around us. We had an off feeling from this truck because it went around several times, but we dismissed it because the area we were at was popular due to the overlook. After a long night of drinking and goofing off, we decided to go to bed. I was in a dead sleep. When out of the woods, I woke up to a blood-curdling scream. I jolted up and asked my wife, what the heck was that? About 30 seconds later, we heard another scream off in the distance. At this point, I grabbed my gun and unzipped the tent so we could see out. My dad had left a lantern burning so we could see a little ways into our campsite. At that moment, we saw the white Dodge duly tearing down the road behind us. They continued down the road until they were out of sight. We heard them stop and get out of their truck, slamming the door and screaming. Then they proceeded to get back in their truck and drive very slowly down the other road that was in front of our campsite. At this point, we were terrified, thinking they were coming to rob us, but they kept driving until they were out of sight. Then we heard them shooting. After the gunshots ended, they sped off. At this point, we thought that maybe they were just drunk and acting stupid so we didn't call the cops, and we didn't have signal anyway. We just tried to go back to sleep. The next day, we had to make a beer run for my dad. When we made it out of the camping area and hit the main highway, there were police everywhere. They had stopped two young boys. We assumed they were the ones who were being troublemakers the night before and continued on into town. The cops were leaving after talking to my dad. They told my dad that the guys in the white dually had gone into the young guy's camp while they were hunting and were robbing them. The boys walked up on their camp being robbed, and the dually guys pulled guns on the young boys, proceeding to rob them at gunpoint. We think if it hadn't been for the people that camped right on top of us, as strange as it was, they would have robbed us instead. They made our campsite look bigger than it actually was. The people in the white dually were never caught. For a little background story, I have been a scout since I was eight years old, so I had to handle all the paperwork and calls to find places to camp. It was mid-November, and I had to find a place to camp. Since I was lazy, I decided to wait until a week before the actual weekend. A week before the weekend, I decided to call some property owners to secure a place to sleep. After calling many numbers, I found that all the owners were unavailable or simply not there. But then I saw a number I had never called before, since it was at the end of the list. I called, and an old lady picked up the phone. I did the basic introductions and all. She agreed to let my team and me stay at her place, and we made the arrangements. That afternoon, I went to her property to check everything, such as potable water, the place to pitch the tent, and the campfire area. The place was kind of dark, but it was nice. The week passed, and Saturday arrived. The day was going well. We played some great games, ate a lot, and had a good night show. As they went to sleep in the tent, I stayed awake to finish paperwork for the next day. It was now midnight, and I decided to go to sleep because we had to wake up early to go to church. As I switched off the flashlight, one of my newbies, there were eight of us in total, wanted to go to the toilet, aka a tree, and asked me to come with her. I understood because it's better to be accompanied at night especially in the woods. She did her business, and I suddenly heard some noises far away but not that far. I told myself it was nothing, probably just some animals looking for food. We went back to the tent. Then I heard footsteps approaching. I remained calm and told myself, maybe it's the old lady checking if we didn't make a fire too close or something. But I still had an odd feeling because it was midnight, and why would she do this at this hour? I didn't hear any more footsteps for about 10 minutes, then I heard more coming toward our tents. Thankfully all of my girls were sleeping because they would have been scared. I was the oldest one. They were about 3 or 4 years younger. As I heard footsteps that seemed to come from one person, I heard others coming from the back of the tent. I thought, okay, this is getting weird. I need to do something. 
I checked the tent from the inside, and thank God one of my newbies had left some embers from the fire, so I could see what was happening between the fire and the zip of my tent. A minute passed by, and a silhouette appeared just between the fire and my tent. I stopped breathing and literally froze. I started to move towards my phone when I saw the silhouette coming closer to the zip of the tent. I sent a message to one of my bosses who was always camping in the nearby areas in case something happened. But I knew she would take too long, so I had to think of something quickly. That's when I had an idea. I set my alarm to sound like a big siren, because sometimes we would do night games and wake up in the middle of the night. So I turned on the alarm, and my girls woke up. The silhouette had started to unzip the tent. I actually saw fingers from below, but as the silhouette heard my girls waking up, he or she sprinted back to where they came from. That's when I saw two other silhouettes sprinting back in the same direction. Everything ended well. Twenty minutes later, my boss came and stayed the night, and thankfully, I never had to deal with those silhouettes again.